right. I'm really excited this morning. Um, we are starting our new teaching series, Breaking Habit. And I'm really excited about it. And just every time we come around this, all that God does. And what I'm even more excited about this morning is who is bringing us God's word today. And so let me do an introduction for those of you who might be new around church or might not be familiar. I told you on Friday, today's going to be the best sermon you've ever heard in Sikama. So uh, yeah, all right. So for those of you who might not be familiar, let me do an introduction um, for you this morning. I do believe, one of the things I do believe is that God marks seasons many times in our lives, if you think about it, by people. That somebody walks into your life, God brings somebody into your life and it feels like it marks a new season. Um, a relationship, a friend, um, somebody just walks in and it's like, man, God started something new or this marked a new thing here in my life and all. And um, this person I have seen mark seasons. Um, for us as a church, like walked into our church and represents something, marked a season. And I would also say for me as a person, as a leader, just with a lot of what I do, um, for the last few years, first of all, came on around it, we, um, volunteering in our church, then served as an intern in our church, uh, then came on staff three years ago. Um, they're about and we've worked together for a couple of years and has really marked seasons and incredibly grateful and just proud of the story that he has walked and just all that God has done through his life and I really thought man there's a word God will put on his heart for us um, this morning all right and so his wife also serves in leadership in our church of when man serves as our next steps team lead but this morning, I want everybody standing in this building and online everywhere. And let's honor this morning, Briggs Bukumio Lutsunde, as he brings us God's word today. Thank you, Monsi. I'm grateful. Thank you. Please have your seat this morning. Thank you. Thank you for the seasons we've walked together. Thank you for holding my hands through it all. Thank you. I'm grateful. Sikamo Church exists for three reasons, and it is to create an elevation for everyday ordinary people to see Jesus, find purpose and meaning to life, and to live to the full. And I'm standing here today because I've experienced all that. I found purpose and meaning to my life. I have, I have seen Jesus and my life is full. So this morning, I'm really grateful to every leader in church, every person that God has used for me, every system that God has used for me in Sikamo Church, I am grateful. Thank you. So as we start out, I just thought to, thank you, thank you, my wife, thank you so much for funny. I'm grateful. So as we start out this morning, I'm just going to tell you like a little story about myself. Journey I've walked, just coming to know Jesus, and then we'll start out from there. So, well, like almost every other person, I'd come to church almost all my life. I've been, I've given myself to church things. But I never really made a decision for Jesus. I didn't, I was in the activity, but I wasn't really making any decision to follow Jesus, giving my life. I was directionless, no purpose. I mean, I, I was just doing whatever. But fast forward to January 2021, I, 
I had just decided to start coming to church like a couple of weeks before then. And, but that particular Sunday, I think it was the first Sunday of the year, I couldn't make it to church. I was, I was in one of those not again moments. I was, I was high. I, I could barely stand up. I was barely a lot. But I decided to start going to church and I had found Sikamo Church then. So yeah, I decided to attend online and it was my first online service, so barely a lot, barely, barely functional, thinking right. But I was in service and the preacher that day, Mr. Bamishialo, he kept, started explaining, expressing what my life was. And he kept asking this question, are you aware? Are you aware? Are you aware? Are you not sleepwalking? Are you not sleep living? And that was the situation I was in. I was sleep living. I, I was dead. I was a dead man walking. Nothing was working in my life. I habitually doubted myself. I could not do anything right. I, I became the opposite of the person I wanted to be. I was so dead. My spirit was dead. I, I didn't have any feelings. Around that time, I remember one night that someone was hurting himself and I was seeing him, like I could see this guy is hurting himself. I couldn't do anything about it. But Jesus is better than you think he is. He is. He's better than you think he is. Because right in that moment, not fully aware, not even sure of what I was doing, I gave my life to Christ. And everything in my life started flowing out of that. And as I was preparing for this talk this morning, I, I looked through my stories and, and all those ordinary moments that I, decisions that I took in the moment when I gave my life to Christ. The decision to find a church family, to find Sikamo Church. I remember vividly the day I decided that I needed to go to church. I needed to start going back to church. My decision to receive help I remember the day I was telling Pastor that I smoked. We had just started speaking, and I, I had promised him I was going to come correct. And it wasn't even like a, I'm telling you so that we can now start working about it. I was saying it so that you can know, so that you are not going to, you won't find out. Maybe I'm, I we're together one day, and then you, <laughs> this guy is acting funny. I just wanted to be upfront with you. My decision started in the Bible. It didn't make sense. It made absolutely no sense. But the decision to go back to it every day. My volunteering, when I joined church, I used to volunteer with venue management. And I, I love washing the toilets. Yeah, I, I did love washing the toilet. My first creative show. I remember how I made the decision to even volunteer in the first place. It was hard. Interning in church. My decision to finish things, to actually put in effort and finish things, I just had a lot of things hanging over my head. This, I've not finished it. That, I've not finished it. But what I would later realize really is that all those moments, all those decisions, they seemed ordinary at the time, but they were very powerful. They were very, very big. They were huge. Because as I took a step in the right direction, I was taking a step away from the wrong direction. As I built right rhythms around my life, I was by implication breaking the wrong ones. And we're starting our Breaking Abbey series today, and I'm so excited about what God is going to do in this two-part series. But for a start this morning, I'll be speaking on a sermon titled, The Redeems of Your Becoming. <laughs> and what I hope to demonstrate is that you have a personal responsibility before God to habitually build up your life. I'm hoping we'll also find out that the rhythms that your life runs on will either prosper or stifle what God is trying to do in you, what he's said to do in you. So let's do a quick exercise this morning. 
I just want you to think of a few things and just hold it in your hands as we, as we speak to each other this morning. So the first thing is, just think of one habit you want to break. Just one thing that you would love to change about your life. One habit that you, now nah, I think I should stop this. And why you want to stop it. Are we done? Are we good? Yeah. Now think of one habit that you have that you are grateful for and why you are grateful for it. Are we good? Last thing. Think of one habit that you think that if you have in your life, something that if you start doing today is going to scale up like your person, who you are, just that one thing. I can remember how I was deciding to just finish things, scaled up my productivity. I mean, whatever it is, just think of one thing that you think if you do this today, it's going to really, really make me a better person. Are we good? Yeah. All right, so just have that at the back of your mind as we walk the journey together. So research shows that at least 43 of your daily activities, 43% of your daily activities, rather, are fraud by your habits. Like, almost half of what you do daily are not things that, they're not random, they're fraud by, like, your habits. And what does it mean? It means that if you do, like, an audit of your life right now, if you, if you check out your life right now, what you find is that Half of the reason you are where you are today are because of your daily rhythms, your habits. So I'm going to ask you this morning, why have you not built those disciplines? Why, why have you not built the daily discipline to, to read your Bible, to pray? Why do you always procrastinate? Why? Now is just never a good time for anything. Why are you always late? You're late to your class, you're late to work. Why do you have several unfinished projects? Why? Why do you always write to-do list every morning and then you finish your day and you've not done anything about it? Why are you still watching porn? Well, people in this service don't watch porn. <laughs> you wanted to leave earlier. Why are you still taking soda? But I think the question I'm really asking us this morning is, to what extent have you participated in what God is trying to do in your life? Can you boldly say that your rhythms, the rhythms your life run on are not stifling a God move in your life? Can we have Matthew 11, 11 28 to 30 on the screen? And I just want to, to see the beautiful picture of what God calls you to. Are you tired, worn out, burned out on religion? Come to me, get away with me, and you recover your life. I will show you how to take real rest. Walk with me. And walk with me. Watch how I do it. Learn the enforced rhythms of grace. I won't lay anything heavy or ill-fitting on you. Keep company with me, and you will learn to live freely and lightly. That's the beautiful life God calls you to, a life of rest. Can you picture living your life with, with just that beautiful rhythm of rest, from a place of rest? Living in the enforced rhythm of grace. And the, the promise is loud, it's, it's like huge. But if we just go through to that verse again and, and see all the things you have to do. Notice you have to come. It says, come to me. Notice it says you should walk with him. It says, work with me. So you will walk. You will work. It says, learn the rhythms of, the unforced rhythms of grace. You have to learn. You have to learn and relearn. Keep company with me. But how badly do you want it this morning? 
How bad did you want the life that God calls you to? Because my first point this morning is that you have a decisions on your hand. It's in your hand. Do you remember that story? That have a story in Matthew 13, where a farmer planted a seed, but like they fell in different environments. One, some on gravel, some on, on the road, some amongst weeds. But some fell on good earth. But the good earth is the only environment that could prosper what the seed had in it. And science proved this morning that for every physically expressed character, there's an interaction between the genes and the prevailing effect of the environment. Please, if you put it on the screen. You can be all that God wants you to be. It's possible. But let's break it out. Let's, let's just look at it, it and put it in our context. Your physically expert character is probably like is who you are, like your expressions. But you see that genes is like, like the God thing that God put in you, like the God capacity within you. See Genesis 1.27. So God created man in his own image. In the image of God, he created him. Male and female, he created them. You have a God capacity in you. That's why, that's why I'm not a goat. Yes, that, that's why I'm not a cow. That's why I'm not a frog. I have a God thing in me. Your DNA is fine. <laughs> but you see your environment is a different story. The things around you, the atmosphere around your life. Can it carry the weight of what God is trying to do in your life? Can it? What's around you? Your daily rhythms and habits. The people you surround yourself with. Your friends, your community. The people you listen to, people you sound out to. What you see, what you hear, what you digest. What you are learning, what you are giving yourself to. We have a God capacity in us, and the extent to which we will see that flow out of our lives is the extent to which we, we fix our environment. So if you, have, like, if you have twins right now, two guys right now, from birth, and you, and you take maybe, in fact, leave one of them in Nigeria, and take one of them to Yankee or somewhere, there will be difference. There will be difference. So are we going to keep living ordinary lives this morning? Are we going to shut down the possibilities of heaven over our lives this morning? Are we going to just keep wishing that things turn around differently? Are we never going to take charge and steward our lives? Because we have a decision to make, we have to decide. We have a personal responsibility to decide to arbitrarily build up our lives in the direction that God is calling us to. So can I invite you this morning to do that? To choose. To choose to be all that God wants you to be. To choose to live freely from, from the hold of bad habits. Not to accept the lies of the devil this morning. To choose not to sell out on the possibilities of heaven over your life, over how you feel in a flash moment. Church, you can choose. You can. My second point this morning is that decisions birth clarity. And it's simple. When you make a decision, that decision empowers you to take a next step. So I don't, I don't stay home a lot. I, I, I'm usually just out. But when I do, I like to sleep. I, I would usually just sleep, crash, 
maybe see movies. It's usually difficult for me to get anything done. And some of those days I'll be very, very hungry, like really, really hungry. But I won't make any decision to fix what I will eat. I, I will just be in it. And I will think from morning till evening, till noon sometimes. <laughs> But some of those days I will get a call and I have to go out. But you see, in that flash moment, I know what I want to eat. I know how to get it. I know what I want to wear. And it's just simple. A decision empowers you with the next step. One of the hardest habits for me to break was smoking. And it was because I enjoyed it. Like, to the very last moment, I did enjoy smoking. But it was then clear that I couldn't steward the God thing in me. I couldn't be what it calls me to. I wouldn't have the alertness to do that if I continued. So it was clear. It was clear Claire had to make a decision and... I guess the decision too was clear. See Daniel's story in Daniel 1 verse 8. Daniel did not want to eat the king's rich food and wine because it would make him unclean. So he asked this guy. <laughs> he asked for permission not to make himself unclean in this way. Daniel was devoted to God and he didn't want to he didn't want to mess what he had going on. He didn't want to mess it up. So it was clear that he had to make a decision. And I guess that clarity empowered him with the decision to ask for permission. Imagine you are going somewhere unfamiliar this morning and you have to use the map. You know, the, the map will ask you for two things. Ask you for where you are right now, your location, and then where you are trying to go to, where to. And when you, like, when all that is settled, once you put those two places, it then starts telling you to go left, take the next turn, take the next right turn, and all that. And it just makes sense. It makes sense. Every single step becomes, like, a, a part of a bigger picture. And it's the same when we make decisions in our lives. We are, we know where we are and we know where we want to be, like in that moment. And now you know the relationships to go away from. You should know why church is a big deal to you. You know conversations not to have anymore. You know people to shut out. You know the discipleship courses you need to take now. You know what you give yourself to and learn. But unfortunately, as human beings, our pathways, the pathways to our destination is not that easy. It's, it's, not, it's not that straightforward. Now you are attached to that relationship and it's difficult to break out of it. You have, you have a messed up experience of church and people in church. And you don't even want to go close to churches or even give yourself to it. You probably missed a crucial turn. Life has happened to you. Let's all try to, to put ourselves in our maps this morning. Just imagine that you are, like you have a device right now in your hands and you are, you are trying to impute where you are and where you want to be on your map. For a fact, our location is a crowded world. A world separated from God. But you see where we want to be is in God's goodness for our lives. Where we want to be is free from bad habits. Destructive habits. Because some people might say that I don't have bad habits. I don't smoke. I don't do... Like, you want to be free from destructive habits this morning. Is it? You want to be reading in, living in the right rhythms for your life. 
you want to be in God's will. You want to be rightly stewarding your life. But the problem is that our location cannot get to where we want to be. They are like, they will never come together. Because by nature, we can't be in right standing with God because we disobeyed. So where are you this morning? Where do you want to be? What are you doing about it? What have you done about it? Have you decided to, to break free from those habits, be being yourself? And you keep coming back to not again, repeating cycles. Let's see what Matthew 11 says again, 28 to 30. Are you tired? Yes, you're tired. You are worn out. You are burned out on religion. It says, come to me. Get away with me and you recover your life. I'll show you how to take real rest. And I guess that's what you need this morning. It says, walk with me and work with me. Watch how I do it. Learn the enforced rhythms of grace. I won't lay anything heavy or ill-fitting on you. Keep company with me. And you learn to live freely and lightly. God is always willing and ready this morning. At any point, he's willing and ready to help you, to help us. And you can ask for his help today. You can. You should never settle. Keep going, it will be worth it. Or do you just want to live in down first rhythms of grace, but, but you are outside the God frame of reference? You are dissatisfied with where you are, but you don't know what to do about it, or you would love to do something about it. I have good news this morning because God loves you more than your, your failures, more than your errors, more than the mistakes you've made. And he's constantly calling you to to come to him. He wants to show you. He wants to teach you. He wants to do life with you. So if you have not made that decision to, to follow Jesus this morning, to, to put your faith in what he has done for you, in the course of the service, there will be like a call and I, I advise you to take it. That decision changed my life. The Holy Spirit started working in me. I... He was cleaning me up. I was in mess. I, it became easy for me to do the right things. Hope welled up in my heart. I began to see possibilities. And I encourage you to decide this morning. Because you have the personal responsibility to decide. One brick at a time, one decision at a time, one next step at a time. In fact, won't fail you at the time. Great. And I have another good news. For a third point this morning, God blesses directions. He does. There's this story in Second Kings about the two lepers, four lepers rather. That's right. So what had happened was that the they were in captive. And it was really, really bad. They had started eating, eating each other's children. And then Elisha gives a word from God. And by this time tomorrow, things will be different. And I want us to see the play out of that promise. Second Kings 7, 5 to, 5, 5 to 6. So that evening, the four lepers went to the Aramean camp. When they came to the edge of the camp, no one was there. The Lord had caused the Aramean army to hear the sound of chariots, horses, and a large army, just four guys. So the soldiers said to each other, the king of Israel has hired the kings of Hittite and the Egyptians to come against us. Just four guys. Four guys. God places efforts, guys. He, he, he blesses their poor efforts. 
being in the right direction for your life, being in his will for your life, comes with a blessing on like all the effort that you put in it. It puts a super on your natural. Those four guys were sounding like Hamis from two countries. Your efforts are loaded and they are backed by heaven. You can take it to the bank. It's loaded. Every single step, step you take, every, every time you make a decision in the right direction, it's backed by heaven. And as we make the right decisions, as we put effort in the right direction this morning, I, I want to encourage you that you let your desire birth devotion. And to be honest, desire in itself is not, it's not bad. It's not, it's not bad. I guess it is even like the basis on which you make decisions and, and grow into devotion in the first place. But desire without devotion is trying to start a car without a key or without fuel. It won't take you anywhere. You just keep wishing. Don't be all talks. You have a decision in your hands. You've made it. You're in the right direction, then put in work. Put in the work, guys. And I agree. I agree that sometimes what takes you from desire to devotion is uncomfortable. It is unfamiliar. It's something you are not used to. It's something that you would not remember to do. But it's fine because you are backed by God. But I guess a good way to start is to do what you can. Do what you can part time. And yes, it will take exertion from your end. But please choose what you see. What, choose choose that, that great plan that God has for you over like the immediate discomfort that you experience. What can devotion look like to you? A good place to start is, you know that thing you had in your mind in the first place, one habit you wanted to break, is to list out what we take you to break it and follow through on it. Day by day. Situation by situation. Reading your Bible daily. You sleep off, it's fine. Your mind will wonder, oh, it's fine, come back to it. Attending your live group meetings. <laughs> Let's have godly conversations. Read that material. Decide. Decide to spend one hour on that material every day. Decide to learn something in the direction that you want to grow into. Second thing I want to encourage you on this morning is to focus on your process over immediate results. And again, I know, I know it's difficult. I know you are putting in effort and it's just this, I'm not even seeing anything coming out of this effort. But you see progress. Stay through. Stay through. Come back another day. Come back another day. Don't idolize perfection. Walk your journey in sincerity. And you, you, you know the best thing about trying to walk in the right rhythms for your life, trying to become better, living your life in the right rhythms. It's not even like what you intend you'll see on the other end. It is who you are becoming. It's who you are becoming, guys. You are being re- renewed and, and formed in the image of Christ. So you put your effort in, effort in a God direction as you put yourself to walk in a God direction. You are becoming more like him. 2 Corinthians 3, 8, 18 says that, and our faces are not covered. We all, 
we all show the, glory, the Lord's glory and we are being changed to be like him. This change in us brings more and more glory, which comes from the Father, from the Lord, who is the Spirit. We are becoming more like Jesus, guys. More and more and more and more like Jesus. It's breaking all those limitations. It's breaking down all those walls. And he's making us more like himself. And I can, I can for a fact tell you that my life is changing. And it has changed. But while I was at it, it didn't look like it. There are days I failed. There are days I had to come back to it. But as I come back another time, another time, another time, I'm becoming more like Jesus. And it's a good thing to see. As I close this morning, my, my heart goes to people who are, who things have happened to, crazy things. Life has happened to you. Things are just messed up. Life dealt you the wrong card. And you have valid reasons this morning. It's not your fault. Things just happen and you, you responded the way you know how to. You're probably in too deep on, on wrong, wrong rhythms with your life. But you see, not everything is God intended. No. But because we serve a great God, every single thing can be God used. And I know you are probably struggling this morning. You are, you are finding it very difficult to give yourself fully to God's rhythms. God has everything but not your heart. Not your heart. Not your ambitions. Not your dreams. Not your relationships. Not your love life. Not your speech. Not your thoughts. Not your playlist. Not the things you give yourself to. I guess it's a good place to be this morning because God is here and he's ready to help you. He'll fix you. He'll fix you up. Please let him in. And I, I even know some of us are here this morning that you... You see what God is calling you to. You see the weight of what God is calling you to. But, but just giving yourself to it seems very difficult. You just can't seem to move. Just give yourself to it. But I'm here to tell you this morning that you can. God has given it to you. You can. You have the grace for it. You can do everything through Christ that strengthens you. You have the strength for it. You have all it takes. Don't second guess yourself. God is up to something beautiful in your life. And I hear, I know it's difficult. Again, I know it's very difficult. And you probably don't know where to start from. You tried severally. my invitation to you this morning is to let go and let God. Let go and let him do a work in you. It's not even in you to do it in the first place. Philippians 2.13 says, yes, it is God who is working in you. It's God who is working in me. He helps me. He helps you. He helps you do what pleases him. And it gives you the power to do it. So if there's a next step this morning, it is for you to let go. Please let go and let God. And you see, it's interesting because while we were yet sinners, while it was, while we, while we were not in, in the frame of reference of God's will, while it was impossible for us to, to come to him, he 
he willingly, freely gave his own son, his only son, to bridge that gap, to make it possible for you to come to him. I love John 3, 16 so much. He says, God so loves the world that he gave his only begotten son. And if you will believe in him, if you believe in him, if you put your trust in him, if you put your faith in all that he has done for you, you will not perish. This corrupts what will not stifle a God moving you. It says you have everlasting life. Let go and let God, guys. Please see beyond yourself. See beyond yourself. Let go. In Jesus, there is there's infinite possibilities. That is greater than anything that you can be that can be keeping you back. Whatever you think you are holding back, the promise that is ahead of you is more than it. And in my journey, I've lost friends. I can't even lie. I've missed things, things I used to love to do that I've had to let go of. I've stayed away from certain places, from people, because mistake happens in mistake territories. There are apps I don't have on my phone. There are things I've made myself accountable on. There are people I've made myself accountable to. There are places I don't go anymore. But you see, for everything that I have have said I lost, I've gained so much more. So much more. Free from destructive habits, from addictions. Stewarding my life right with the help of God. Living my life with a sense of awareness. There's purpose to my life. My life is full. I have Sikamo Church. I've built valuable relationships. There's a depth and richness in my soul. There's hope. I have a childlike excitement for the future now. Can I invite you to let go and let God this morning? See beyond yourself. Can we stand to our feet as we pray this morning? God loves you. He loves you so much that he will give his son for you. And he invites you to partner with him. has invested so much in you, so much. He wants to help you if you just start asking for that help this morning. God is willing, is ready to help you. Why should I keep repeating cycles? Why? Why can't I build financial disciplines? I get paid two days. I've spent everything in one day. He can do everything. Just ask him this morning. Ask for his help this morning. My character won't get the best of me. just learned to, to give everybody a piece of my mind. He can help you this morning. The Holy Spirit is willing to break every resistance in your heart. 
is willing to break you free from everything that is holding you back. I won't come back to not against anymore. Pray that His will will prosper in your life. Pray that He's helping you to build the right atmosphere around your life. One step at a time, one decision at a time. One next step at a time. He wants to, he wants to. If you're like me, he wants to bring you back to life. He wants you to live in your first freedoms of grace this morning. If you just ask for his help. Let go, let go, let go, let go. habits, bad habits, draining habits. We want to live in good rhythms, God. For some people here today, God, who need help just in breaking off bad habits, some people who need help in building better habits or just scaling up habits, God, today we all just receive your help. We thank you for it in Jesus' name. Everybody said amen. I'm going to hand over the service in Lagos right now. Somebody's going to come make an invitation um, for you right now. But in here, in here this morning, I want to make an invitation for somebody who can boldly say you are in the right standing with God. Such a good word to hear and just see God's design, God's plan for our life. But maybe, maybe you'll be honest enough to say, yeah, there are things I need to get right. I need to fix that, fix that, fix that. But just at the foundation of it, I need to fix where I am with God. And the truth is of ourselves, we can't do that. We can't reach that. We can't, we, we're not good enough. But God wants them for all put his son upon the cross 2,000 years ago to fix our deficiency. That we believe that Jesus died a death that he had no business dying. He didn't deserve to die. He was innocent. Why did he do it? Because we were guilty. And today you can put your trust in what Jesus did. Today can be that day where you would say, man, I've run all the wrong cycles. I'm far away from God. But I want to put my trust in Jesus and be made right with God. He loves you. That was ringing so much to that word. He loves you. He sees you. He knows you. Maybe there's a lot to fix in your life, but let's start it from there. Let's fix where you are with Jesus. I don't know who you are, how you came to church today. Maybe you've been coming or maybe you are new. Maybe you would say at some point, I made a decision kind of around it, but I lost my way, made poor choices. But as we speak today, you can't boldly say you're in the right place with God. I want today to be a day of a miracle for you, right? So every head bowed this morning and just, just give somebody an honest moment. If you say, I'm far away, I need it. I need to be made right with God. I need forgiveness. I just need forgiveness. I need grace. I need to be washed clean from my sin. I failed more than I know. 
He loves you. He loves you. He loves you. And he sees you right now. I'm going to count to three. And wherever you are, just as a sign of I'm saying yes to that, I want you to put your hand on your chest wherever you are in this building, online, anywhere. Today, a miracle is happening in your life. Are you ready? One, two, three. Just shoot it on your chest. God sees you. He knows you. God bless you. God bless you. Thank you. Thank you. Across the room, God bless you. That's a miracle. That's a miracle. Nobody comes to God in Jesus and it's a wrong step. It's the right thing to do. God bless you. God bless you. That's awesome. Across the room this morning, and I also believe people online this morning, you know what we're going to do? As a family, we're going to say a prayer. I'm going to lead everybody to say a prayer together this morning. But as we do it today, those who have their hand on their chest, I want you to say this word with boldness. We're just standing in with you, but you say this word with boldness, knowing that God hears your, your voice today. So can we all say together, say, Heavenly Father, I come to you today because you've made a way for me to come through the death, the burial, and the resurrection of your son, Jesus. So I believe with all my heart that Jesus Christ is the son of God and he's the savior of the world. I make today the day that I confess Jesus as my savior and my Lord. I surrender everything to follow you. I give you my life. Please wash me clean. Please make me new. Say, Jesus, I lay it all down to follow you. I'm a child of God. Please fill me with your grace. I'll follow you for the rest of my life. And one day, I'll be with you in heaven. I believe it. In Jesus' name. Amen. Can we congratulate everybody who prayed that prayer? That's a miracle. Let's congratulate. Let's clap about it. Big, big, big congratulation to everybody who prayed that prayer. A miracle just happened in your life. And man, we are so excited about it. As a church family, we would love to serve you. What's going to happen if you're in the building? Once you get out of the doors, around the premises, you're going to see some of our faith support team waving something like this around the premises. I have decided... And it's just something we want to place in your hands. So just tell any of them I pray that prayer. They'd love to place this in your hands. It's a gift from our church. Just a message, a reminder of what has happened today. And just all the help that you can get that we can serve you with as you track this new journey. We'd love to record your decision so that we can be praying for you. And we can serve you in every way that we can. If you are online, that's how you can let us know that you prayed that prayer. But one more time, can we say congratulations to everybody who prayed that prayer in this building and online. Congratulations, a miracle just happened in your life.